Well, hello and welcome. My name is Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and I want to visit with you for a few moments on this subject called how to buy properties subject to the existing note. So first of all, let's define what buying a house or property subject to the existing note actually means. So what it means is a seller of a property is agreeing to sell to you or your entity, a property, real estate, and they are agreeing to transfer the title or the deed or ownership to you while also agreeing to leave the current mortgage in their name and you agree to make their payments. Now we're not talking about assuming a mortgage because when you assume a mortgage, then the mortgage lender has got to approve for you to now assume the mortgage. So in the case of buying subject to the existing note, the mortgage lender is not involved whatsoever in approving or disapproving or turning you down or saying it's okay for you to make the payments. So you see buying subject to that mortgage is going to stay in the seller's name. Now, when I first heard of this strategy way back in 2009, my first question was who in their right mind will agree to leave the mortgage in their name and trust me to make their monthly payments for them. I mean, it's like I could stop making payments and, you know, ruin their credit or whatever. I mean, why would someone agree to do that? And I quickly learned and discovered that the higher the motivation that a seller has to sell, then the more willing that they will be to agree to this strategy. So what sellers would agree to this type of strategy? The answer is a motivated seller who is seeking debt relief, a motivated seller who's seeking debt relief. So it could be that, you know, they can't afford their mortgage payments anymore. Somebody got a divorce, so they don't have the income, can't afford the house anymore. Someone lost a job, someone died, something happened in their life to where they just can't afford the payments anymore and they're looking for debt relief. Many times, not always, but many times when you buy a property subject to the existing note, the seller is behind in their payments. They could be behind just one month, two months, or three months. Now, if you buy it subject to the existing note and they are in arrears, then you're going to need to catch those payments up immediately after the closing. So that's what subject to is. One of the benefits, it's, it's one of the most profitable ways or profitable deals that you can do because the interest rate that you're going to be paying if you're buying, you know, most of these homes are, well, have, we call them pretty houses. In other words, they're, most of them are still occupied by the seller. So the home has been maintained. But, you know, in today's market, you're going to be making payments on mortgages that have got only like, you know, 4% interest on those payments. Closings can be very, very fast and quick. So uh, again, it's a very profitable way. It's, it's a very creative way to get funding for your deals. You don't have to go raise private money in order to fund the deal. You don't have to get approved by a lender. You're not paying ridiculous rates to hard money lenders. You're not having to go to the bank and get approved for a loan. So it's a beautiful way to fund your deals buying subject to the existing note. So first of all, before I go over the steps on how you do it, and I'm gonna lay out step by step, 14 steps to do a subject to deal. But before, let's talk about real estate attorneys. So before you start making offers to sellers using the subject to strategy, then you need to find a real estate attorney who is willing to do subject to closings. Not all real estate attorneys will do it. It's perfectly ethical, perfectly legal. It's actually on line 202 on the HUD closing statement. So it's already there on the closing statement. Some attorneys feel like that they are bound to notify the mortgage lender when title has transferred, but that is not the case. And by the way, I'm not an attorney. I never played an attorney on the radio or TV. 
So I give you that disclaimer. I can just tell you that that is the advice I've heard from multiple attorneys. I've been using the same real estate attorney firm for the past, well, since I started investing in real estate in 2003. And there's two attorneys in that firm that do real estate closings, one of which does nothing but real estate closings. And they've handled all of my subject to deals that I've purchased again since 2003. So you want to find that attorney. Now, let's talk about the steps on how to buy a property subject to the existing note. Step number one, I just said, find a real estate attorney who will close your subject to deals. In fact, I should do a video and uh, our audio recording sometime soon and share with you on how you can actually find a real estate attorney that's friendly to real estate investors and will close your subject to deals. Step number two, once you've got that relationship in place with the real estate attorneys, you want to start marketing and finding motivated sellers. So I do a lot of Facebook marketing. I do direct mail campaigns. We do outbound calling bandit signs still works. So just decide on your two or three main strategies that you're going to focus on and start marketing either by direct mail or on the internet or outbound calling and market to finding the motivated seller. Step number three, when a seller or prospect responds, you then fill out your property lead sheet. That's going to give you all the information that you need to know on how to structure the deal and to see if it's a candidate for a subject to deal. Obviously, the seller has got to have a mortgage in place for you to be able to take over the payments. So that's the first trigger that I think about when I'm looking at a property lead sheet. If there is a mortgage, I immediately think, can I buy this house subject to the existing note? Step number four, you wanna make sure you've got all the mortgage information on the property lead sheet. Or you, know, you can't make an offer subject to the existing note. You need to know what is the payoff balance or the approximate payoff balance. How much is the monthly payment? For one reason, you wanna know how much the monthly payment is, is that when you buy it, then that's gonna be the monthly payment you're paying. Well, can you rent that house out or sell it on rent to own and bring in more monthly payment per month than the underlying debt per month. So you wanna make sure that before you buy a house subject to the existing note, that you can have a positive cash flow per month in between what you can make per month versus how much is that underlying mortgage. Step number four, you wanna be able to determine if you can sell it on rent to own. As I just mentioned, you wanna have more money coming in per month than you have going out. Number six, if the math makes sense in looking at the, the um, property information sheet, it's at that time you make an appointment to go visit the property, either yourself or someone on your team. Don't ever buy a property without having boots on the ground, eyes, either yourself or someone else, and take a visit on the property. Now, once you're there, once you decide to visit the property, go ahead and have the seller of the property contact their mortgage company and request what's called a 30 day payoff instruction letter. What that will give is the exact payoff amount. In other words, if the seller has told you what their balance owed is, what their balance owed is on their most recent statement, that is not the exact payoff amount. So you want them to get that payoff instruction letter. Step number seven, you want to prepare the offer to purchase. Now the, the way you prepare the offer to purchase is the purchase price should be the actual current payoff amount that is on the payoff instruction letter, unless you've agreed or unless you're going to be paying more than the payoff. So if you're negotiating to pay $5,000 more above the payoff, then you would take the exact payoff amount, add $5,000 to it, and that is the purchase price. Now, step number eight, you want to know what to say and what not to say. So we never use the phrase subject to, either in person or over the phone, because the seller is not going to know what you're talking about. So the exact language that I use, and I'm going to share it with you right now, the exact script that I use when talking to a seller, I do this in person. So once we've viewed the property, we've looked, looked around, the math makes sense, here's exactly what I say. I'll say to the seller, I can do the deal 
It makes sense for us to do the deal. And we will have a traditional closing where the real estate attorney, my real estate attorney will handle the closing and prepare all the documents. Now the deed and the ownership of your property will be transferred into my entity. At closing, I'll be responsible for all the property taxes, the insurance, the repairs, the monthly mortgage payments, and any and all associated or any expenses associated with the property. And the seller will also sign what's called an authorization to release and all your correspondence from your mortgage company will be mailed to my office. So your mortgage is gonna be paid off when I sell the house to a new buyer. So in other words, Mr. or Ms. Seller, all the problems, all the headaches, all that stuff associated with your property is now my responsibility and it's off your shoulders. I don't then ask them, do they want to do it? I just stop talking. And of course, using a frame of the assumptive close, I tell them this is what's going to happen. Step number nine, after visiting the property and negotiating with the seller, you're gonna email the payoff instruction letter and the offer to purchase to your real estate attorney for a quick closing. Now I cannot emphasize how important the relationship is with your real estate attorney to get fast closings. I can have a closing set up within 48 business hours with my real estate attorney. And if I didn't have that relationship and someone just off the street called up the real estate attorney firm that I use, they would be three to four weeks out before they could get a closing. So your relationship is extremely, extremely important. Step number 10, while you're at the closing with the seller at your real estate attorney's office, you want to have the seller of the property call their lender and request what's called a change of address for all of their mortgage company's correspondence to be mailed to you at your address. Now, while your seller is on the call with their mortgage company, you want to have the seller reconfirm exactly to the penny how much it will take to bring the account current if the payments are in arrears because you're going to bring all those payments current immediately after you close and after all the documents are signed on public record. Now, step 11, also while you're at the closing, you're gonna to want to make sure your seller signs what I referred to a moment ago as the authorization to release form, which will give you, your team members, and your attorney the right to talk to the seller's mortgage company anytime in the future if you need to talk to the mortgage company or get any kind of information from them. Now, step number 12, you want to send a copy of the authorization to release to the seller's mortgage company, either by email or fax, to get your entire team authorized to talk on the seller's behalf. Have someone in your team follow up with the mortgage company as well to make sure that the mortgage company has received that, that authorization to release and you and your team and your real estate attorney have actually been added to the list of authorized people that can call and ask questions about that mortgage. Step number 13, you wanna go ahead and purchase your own insurance coverage, your own property, property coverage on the property, and you wanna have the seller contact their insurance company and cancel their insurance because they no longer have what's called an insurable interest. Now, you're gonna to need to uh, step number, uh, still in that step 13, you're going to want to send a copy of your policy. 100% of the mortgage companies will require their company name listed as the mortgagee, as the mortgagee on the insurance policy. And that will provide proof of insurance that that, that property is covered. If you don't do that, then once the seller's insurance is canceled, you will receive a notice in the mail of course, it's all addressed to the seller's name, but you have all the mail coming to you. You will receive a copy or a notice of cancellation. And if you don't provide proof of insurance, they will force place insurance. And you do not want that to happen because those premiums are extremely, extremely high. And then finally, step number 14 in the process, if there's any past due mortgage payments in arrears, you wanna make sure you bring those current uh, right away. And just as a side note, if you don't have the money available, you can borrow private money in a junior position, you know, a smaller loan amount, you can borrow that money and 
use private money to actually bring the payments current and you can use the private money as well to make the initial mortgage payments so you're not digging into your own pocket for the cash flow. And then there you have it, the 14 easy step-by-step -step instructions on how to invest and buy a house subject to the existing note. Well, I'm Jay Connor. Thanks for tuning in and listening to the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your business to the next level.